Hello! It's another Esoteric Podcast Extra episode. Today we're talking about the election. <laughs> Hello, the internet! This is Travis. With me, as always, in these extra episodes is Wesley. Someday we are going to get RJ involved in one of these extra episodes. He's going to have to, you know, not have 50 jobs to pull that off. Um, but one of these days, he will not work so much, and he can do some of these extra episodes with us. Um, until then, it's just me and Wesley. Um, you, of course, have found this on YouTube, because that's where we post these extra episodes. Um if you found it on a random YouTube thing, check out our channel. We are the Esoteric Podcast channel. Should be linked right down in the description of this video. Um, we have a bunch of other videos, a bunch of other topics. Um, in addition, we do a weekly podcast. You can find that Saturday evenings right here on YouTube. Um, that is our the edited version of our live podcast. The live podcast is on Sundays um, over on twitch.tv um, slash the Esoteric Podcast with underscores the underscore esoteric underscore podcast um if you want you can follow us over on twitter we are at the esoteric pod over on twitter where we are terrible at tweeting we at the very least do mention whenever these new extra episodes go up um whenever anything goes up on youtube we talk about when we're about to go live on twitch um we check occasionally to see if anybody is trying to reach out to us or mention us on Twitter. Uh, if somebody does and, and um, we need to reply, we'll reply. Um, uh, not not very good at the actual, um, you know, talking about fun things on Twitter. Though. We're getting there. Um, so so we're, we're going to get better. Um, we're, we're all still pretty new to this. Um, we, we got so many plans for what we want to put up on YouTube that we keep putting Twitter. As, ah, we'll do Twitter later. We'll do Twitter later. Because um, we got we got so much content we want to bring to you guys over here on YouTube. And maybe a few more live shows over on Twitch. And we haven't really decided all that yet. Yeah. Um, but if you really, really like what we do, you want to support us, you want to hear RJ in more of these podcasts so that he's not always off at work, um, you can support us on Patreon. We are the Esoteric Podcast over on Patreon. Um, support us there. Um, give us um, some money. We can get some cameras. You can see our, our faces. Um, although I've been told I have a face for radio, um, so maybe you don't want to see mine. I don't know. Um, uh, Wesley's face... pretty though. You can you can stare at Wesley. Actually, I've been um, told I have a face for um, uh, the underside of car tires. <laughs> Okay, sure. That's you, you talk to weird people, man. Uh, it is not a very poetic thing. Um, anyway, yeah. So over on Patreon, we get some cameras, some better microphones, um, uh, some more free time. We don't have to work as much. We we can maybe get some more free time, put up some more YouTube content. Um, yeah. So um, as I as Wesley said earlier, today we're going to talk about the election because today, as of the recording of this video, and I believe when it's going to be put up on YouTube, is of course um, November the eighth, the Tuesday after the first Monday of November, otherwise known as Election Day in the United States. Um, right now, as we are recording this, um, polls are still open across the nation. Um, they will not be closing for another hour or two. Um, and, uh, yeah, we, we just want to talk about the election. Um, so, Wesley, you are 19 this year, which means this is the first national election you have ever been able to participate in. Um, what do you think so far? Um, th this is a founding principle of our nation. Um, are you sad yet? Are all elections this bullshit? <laughs> uh, near as I can tell, yes. Um, I, let's I really... hear my first election... My inaugural election um, was Bush versus um, um, Gore. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, no, near as I can tell, all elections are, are fucked up, man. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, I, I feel cheated. I want my teenage card back. Can I have my <laughs> high schooler card back yet? No, no, no. I have to choose between a psychopath and Hillary, Hillary Clinton. Um, well, theoretically, there are other choices. You could go vote for the Green Party. Oh, yeah, that's... Or the Prohibition Party, or... Libertarian was one. Libertarian two. Party, or... Yeah, you could vote for any of those things. Um, yeah, I did vote third party when I did vote. Okay, um, so you, you threw your vote away. Awesome. <laughs> um, yeah, go me. <laughs> To be fair, um, yeah, later in this this little thing, I am going to discuss why I loathe our current election system um, and and why why it is you threw your vote away and why it why it is that is considered throwing your vote away. Um, 
you know, it, it should be that you are voting for the person you like. You're, you're showing um, the, the, the person you like, and that is that is not what you're doing. Um, it's not the way our election system works. Um, hate to tell you. <laughs> yeah. um, but we'll, we'll talk about that a little later. Right now, let's talk about, about this election. Um, um, let's see. So, yeah. Uh, um, who do you want to start with? Trump? Clinton? Um, let's start with Clinton, because I can talk about her stuff before I go into my full hate hate mongering rampage kind of like what trump does at his rallies but uh, a little more eloquent um i don't know wesley i've heard you speak before even trying to outdo trump might be too high a bar for you <sighs> that's true that's very true clinton um i actually the only reason i didn't vote for clinton is because um don't get me wrong the scandals do cast a big shadow of a or shadow of doubt on her but the main reason i didn't vote for her is because um originally when the election started i was on the bernie sanders camp okay so wait you used to be in the bernie sanders sanders camp and then you moved over to a libertarian camp yes wow that's a change <laughs> Part of it could be attributed because to I live with my father now, and I... Uh, see, okay, when I lived with my mom, I was raised diehard liberal Democrat. Like, socialism was one of those things that I looked at, I was like, yes, our country needs to do this. And then I started living with my dad, and um, he's the uh, ex exact opposite. He's capitalism. For, you know... Yeah, capitalism, go money and shit. Um, trickle down e economics. Because Reagan is like his second Jesus. Um, <laughs> I don't say that jokingly. Um, but, you know, so I kind of have like that neutral standpoint where I'm like, yes, they both have good qualities, but they, but both candidates scare me. Um, the reason, uh, that's why I went libertarian over going to Hillary after Bernie. Also because I was kind of ticked after Bernie lost. And there is a socialist party out there that is way more socialist than Bernie Sanders ever was. Yeah, but Bernie made sense. <laughs> I wouldn't actually know. I really don't care. I have, I like I said, my first um, election I could have voted in was Bush Gore. And, yeah, I haven't cared about a national election since. Um, every single presidential candidate um, spends more time making you hate their opponent than talking about what they do right. Which is um, part of the reason I can't wait for today to end, because, oh my gosh, then all the smear campaigns will finally be over. Yeah. Um, it is so much work to actually learn what these candidates are planning on doing when they become president um that yeah i don't want to put that much effort into it so screw national elections i don't care whoever wins yeah they'll be fine um local elections however local elections definitely more important yeah. um, to to everyone anybody listening to this podcast if you didn't vote for a local election today you screwed yourself because local elections are what is going to greatly affect your life. They affect whether or not the road you take to work has potholes in it. They affect um, where school zones are. They affect who the county sheriff is, who the, the, the local um, uh, district or county attorney is, who's going to prosecute things, who your judges are. Um, you interact with local government way, way more often than the national elections. The president may do some things that will enact giant sweeping changes to your way of life, but the local elections are going to fuck you daily if if you get somebody in there who is uh, interested in doing something that will fuck you daily. Um, so the local elections, that is where you should be putting your time and effort. Um, national elections, I, I could give two fucks about. I, I do not give a damn. Mm. Um it's just not worth my effort. Um, almost, like, right now, worst case scenario seems to be um, Congress gets freaking deadlocked and nothing fucking happens, and 
Well, you know, that's not necessarily a good thing, but I'm not terribly worried about either side instituting massive freaking uh, um, changes on a whim overnight. Um, mm -hmm. You know, so, yeah, whatever. I'm, I'm Even if Trump wins, I'm not terribly fucking worried about what he's actually going to be able to do. <laughs> um, yeah. You know, I mean, because he'd have to win and somehow get a majority in a Republican majority in the Congress and Senate. Um, and then we'd actually have to find out which of his policies were straight up bluster, getting people to fucking like the wall in Mexico. Um, I would not be surprised if, you know, a year into his presidency, he's still talking about how how badly he wants to do that. But uh, look at all these roadblocks that keep coming up. Shucks. I just can't pull it off, guys. Sorry. Really wanted to. When in reality, he's like, give me more roadblocks. I, you know, can't follow through on this crazy bullshit. Um. Oh, that reminds me of one of my favorite things is um, uh, what my mom used to talk about. What if Trump was uh, running as a um, as a as a fake Republican? And in all reality, he was, um, he was gonna, you know, get elected and then he's gonna be like, yeah, I'm a Democrat, by the way. Um, well, I've, I've heard that before, although most of that was he was going to drop out this past weekend, um, leaving the Democratic Party practically unopposed and, and sweeping Hillary in, um, because I don't know if you're aware of this, Wesley, but, uh, Trump used to be good friends with the Clintons. Oh, yeah. Um, he was amazing they, friends with the Clintons. Yeah, they, they were, the, both of the Clintons were at his wedding, um, Which back one? last time Trump, uh, was thinking about running for president and actually starting to build up a campaign, he was running as a Democrat. Um, yeah. you know. And, and, well, there's also one of the things where, um, in an interview, I forget when it was, but he said something like, if I were to run for president, uh, under a party, it'd be under the Republicans because I know I could win easily because it, it was something to that effect. Yeah. Um, I don't remember the exact quote myself, but yeah, but um, but no, the reason I didn't vote for Hillary is because well, those scandals scare me, and I know it's terrible that they do because it's just part of the smear campaign that both sides have going on. Well, uh, unless they're complete fabrications by the Trump campaign, they are legitimate things. Yeah, they um, they are. I, like I said, I haven't paid enough attention to actually separate which one's which. Um. Mm -hmm. But, you know, some of them are going to be legitimate, um, the legitimate things that, you know, is this okay? You know, I, I don't know how close any of the things Clinton did has come to, say, Watergate, but, um, all they were able to show that Nixon did during the Watergate scandal is he covered up some bad shit his friends did. He didn't actually do anything bad himself until he was covering up bad shit that friends did. Yeah. Um, I don't get me wrong, it was bad shit his friends did he was going to profit from, so, you know. Um, but that was enough that we were willing to um, try throwing him out of office. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, it was enough that, that his popular opinion sunk so low, he stepped down. Yeah. Um, so, you know, once again, I don't know how close Hillary came to any of those things, but... Um, you know, let, let's face it, um, the legitimate ones, they have a reason to legitimately scare you. Um, yeah. And, and you know, that's part of the reason I just didn't vote for her. Um, reason I didn't vote for Trump. So, did you, did you actually look at any of her policies? Um, I, no, and okay. I fell into the. Because me and you were talking about this before we started the episode, is that um, usually in elections, people don't vote for necessarily the policies. They vote for the person because of how... Uh, it might Actually, be... usually they vote against a person. Yes. Um, and yeah, we'll, we'll talk about that in a little bit. But yeah, Trump. I'm assuming you also didn't side against him because of his policies either. That, that was definitely part of it. Um... Uh, I, uh, correction, a vast majority of the reason I didn't vote for him was because of, um, the way, because I, I looked at Trump, not necessarily from what are his policies, but how is this guy going to act in foreign, um, uh, 
like you know foreign ambassador things or you know just foreign negotiations that scared me that was like well um i'm i'm not going to make a direct comparison to trump here but uh just other other foreign relations things um Winston Churchill used to like go to the White House and then walk around the White House naked on official visits. Um, <laughs> you know that. So you know, I'm, I'm just pointing out that uh, not every elected leader necessarily does a wonderful job of fucking uh, um, participating on the world stage well. Um, yeah. In fact, a lot of the best leaders are those who recognize that they cannot do that well. And find somebody who can do it well, and they go do most of it. Um, because let's face it, look at the job of president. If you can find somebody who can do every single thing that we expect the president to do on their fucking own, I'm going to call you a goddamn liar because you're lying. Um. <laughs> yeah. Um, but no, just uh, Trump, the way he uh, – a lot of his general opinions and ideas – scare so, me to death so you're you're not a big fan of his catering to the racist um sexual orientationist i don't even know that's a word but his anti uh, um lgbtq homophobic homophobic there's a good word for it we'll go we'll go homophobic um messaging um not at all not at okay. all because you know as i think i've said on this podcast before i know i've said it on my channel a number of times i'm bisexual that scares me. <laughs> I think we mentioned it in a recent episode, actually. Um, I think it was, so. It was brought up. I don't remember why. Um, but yeah. Um, yeah, it just... They... So, so once again, not so much his policies outside of that build a wall on the Mexican border policy. Well, that, um, that first of all, to me, just sounds like, why would you even, like, no, no... <laughs> Yeah, no, that's that's a complete gibberish policy. Um, I'm not terribly worried about it because, like I said, I I'm no matter how for it Trump is, I have faith in the rest of our government that that would never get anywhere. Um, <laughs> you know, because it's got to get spending approved in Congress and the Senate, and um, you know, there's no way something that massive is already going to be in a slush budget somewhere where Trump could be like, aha, rather than paying border patrol agents, we will fire them all and build a wall. Pretty sure the wall is still more expensive. Um, <laughs> Unless you're hiring like top the line border. Um, patrol. Yeah. His, his statements of we're going to make Mexico pay for it. I'm sure are fine. You're not going to um, get a contractor to come out, build a wall and get an IOU from Trump saying, here, take this to Mexico. They'll get you your cash. No, they're going to want the money from Trump. And then Trump can go get it from Mexico, assuming he can, you know. Um, so well, even then, it's still coming out of our budget. So, yeah, I, I – there are a lot of hurdles to that wall project actually getting anywhere. Actually, um, he um, he visited Mexico and talked to the Mexican president. The president was like, yeah, we need a wall. Um, do you know why the Mexican president wants a wall? Why? A bunch of the guns that are being used in their little gang wars and drug cartel wars and shit come from us. People are buying them in Texas, New Mexico, Arizona, moving them across the fucking border into fucking Mexico. Um, <laughs> yeah, the Mexican president's like, yes, we can stop the guns from ruining my country. Please put up a fucking wall, Trump. Um... <laughs> <laughs> I'm imagining him begging at that, like, you know, when that Trump and the president go behind closed doors. I'm just imagining him sit, sitting on his knees begging Trump, put it up, man, put it up. Now, you will also notice that nowhere in there did Mex the Mexican president said he would pay for it. Oh, oh that, that was actually something that, ironically, Fox News highlighted. Um, they were like, yeah, no talk about how much it's going to cost. Yeah. No. Mexico would love the U.S. to build that. They ain't giving us a dime for it, though. <laughs> um, yeah. Because let's face it, if they could afford it, they would have already put one up. <laughs> yeah, so, um, but yeah. I, that's, uh, you know, it was after hearing all this stuff that, like, you know, I hate to say that I fell into the smear campaigns of both, uh, 
candidates, but I did. Which can be attributed to the fact I'm a first-time voter, so... No. No, nope. it is not. It is the voting system. Mm. Um, are you aware of first-past-the-post voting? No, I'm not. That is what our election system is. It is um, set up so that um, whoever gets the most votes um, wins. Um, technically, it can be set up in a number of different ways with some runoffs being involved. and um, But it is, is set up in a way so that if there's only one position being um, filled, like president, um, you vote for president. And whomever gets the biggest votes wins. Um, and the problem, or one of the many problems with this system, um, is things like, um, third party systems or thir third party candidates. Like, let's say rather than telling everybody vote for Hillary, Bernie Sanders said, fine, I'm going to run as an independent candidate. Okay. Mm -hmm. Bernie Sanders had a lot of people who were voting for him. You know what that would have done? Hmm. That would have given Trump the victory. Oh, yeah, because it would have split the party. Hillary's base would have been a bunch of people who are currently probably voting for Hil Hillary because um, the the um, uh, Bernie Sanders is not on the ballot. Um, those people would be voting for Sanders if he was on the ballot, meaning there is nobody to vote or nobody out voting um, Trump. Even if all those Bernie Sanders people would put Hillary second and the Green Party candidate third and um, the mule they found on the side of the road fourth and put Trump like 20th, um, they're going to end up with Trump. Mm -hmm. Because voting for the person you think or that you want to win um, actually doesn't win. You have to vote strategically. You have to vote against a candidate um everybody needs to part get together and pick which person is going to beat trump because you're not a bunch of people who all like hillary's ideas you're a bunch of people who hate trump's ideas and hillary is the closest one you can all agree on so we're gonna put her up mm -hmm. um yeah which means any vote for a candidate that is not um a vote for the runner-up is a wasted vote. Because um, if you would have rather voted for Trump second, but your candidate is like, you know, the, the Libertarian Party candidate, and you're like, yes, I'm going to vote Libertarian, um, but you prefer Trump over Clinton, voting Libertarian may cost Trump the election. Um, voting for the person, you, the person whose policies you actually agreed with um, could cost Trump the election. Um, even though you'd rather have Trump over Hillary. Um, mm -hmm. So you cannot vote for the person whose policies you agree with. You have to vote against the person whose policies you disagree with. If you hate Hillary and you really, like, out of all the candidates, you want her in the office least, you have to give your vote for the candidate that has the best chance of beating her, which is Trump. Mm. On the same goes the other direction. If you want to keep Trump out of office, you have to vote for Hillary. Um, any vote for somebody who isn't Hillary is just going to help Trump get into office. Um, mm. So you're not voting for somebody. You're voting against somebody. And, and it is a terrible, terrible thing because, as you have noticed, um, the candidates realize this. <laughs> they no longer have to talk about what they are going to do to help you. They have to talk about what the other guy is going to do to hurt you. And then make sure that um, you know that you are the best option, um, or that they are the best option, excuse me. They have to make sure that you know that they are the best option for stopping that person. Um, so Trump makes Hillary look like a troll living under a bridge and tells everybody, if you want to keep her out of office, you have to vote for me. Hillary does the same thing. Mm -hmm. um, and, and the election is no longer about who has the best ideas for managing the country? It's about voting against the person, and it's a terrible, terrible thing for um, mm -hmm. elections. Um, if you apply it to something, say like Congress, we also use first past the post in in congressional elections and stuff um, because we are sorted out into districts. 
right? So mm -hmm. whichever district you vote in, you have one representative going to Congress. My district has one representative going to Congress. Um, the Senate has two people from the whole state, but they're not voted on at the same time. They're voted on at different times. So on the election, you've only got the one senator you're voting for. Um, so all of this is still the exact same situation. Um, you, you're not voting for the candidate that you like. You're voting against the candidate you don't like. Um, and you're voting for the person most likely to beat that guy. Um, so what you end up with in office are a bunch of people who who aren't necessarily don't necessarily have ideas that you like. They're just the ideas you you know, they're the person most likely to keep somebody whose ideas you don't like out of office. Um, mm. And it's it's not a, a good system. Then you throw in gerrymandering. Are you aware of what gerrymandering is, Wesley? You explained it to me one time. So have you forgotten they were all already? Uh, shoot. Yeah, because it was the night we were smoking cigars. <laughs> okay. Um, what gerrymandering is is um, let's say you have five districts of five people. Okay. Um, six of those, six of the um, people in the whole, out of the 25 are Democrat. The other 19 are Republican. Okay. If you did a nice straight even split, um, two of the districts would have three people in them and be democrat and the other three would be republican right mm -hmm. um that's going to get you closest to the division of um of the actual population um gerrymandering is where you take five of those democrats put them all in one district leaving only that one lone democrat now the republicans have four districts instead of three um you could do the same thing if there were nine democrats cram all nine dis Democrats into two districts, and then instead of the Democrats um, being able to take um, three districts, they take you know, two. And you can do the, you know, spread it out the other way, so that once again you've got, um, you know, Democrats could also gerrymander so that you've got more Democratic districts than the numbers would necessarily allow. Um, theoretically, my original example was doing exactly that. By taking these six Democrats and splitting them three in each district, bam, now you've got um, a Democratic victory, even though maybe the Democrats shouldn't have that many. You know, um, you could take those six Democrats, spread them out one in each district, um, two in the fifth district, and now the Democrats don't win a single district. Um so yeah, you, you can see how just moving these lines around and where the population is voting for um, can mess with the makeup of something like Congress. Yeah. Um, because yeah, you, you could take those six Democrats and make sure they don't have a voice at all. Um, they, they are, six out of 25 is just over a fifth. Um, you know, so they should have one district then, right? Yeah. You can make sure they don't get any. You can make sure they can get two. Um <laughs> You know, um, so yeah, it's, it's not representative and, and the, the, a big issue with gerrymandering that, um, isn't necessarily very well known is that once the districts are set up so that, um, Republicans, um, are always able to win their Republican districts, and Democrats are always w able to win their Democratic districts, um, they, they do it because you no longer have to be a moderate, um, because all the, Democrats have been moved out of your district. You don't have to appeal to the Democrats to make sure you can get that vote um, from the, the fence-sitting Democrats. You know, mm -hmm. um, That used to be the thing. You'd have a moderate Republican against a moderate Democrat because most people in the country are pretty damn moderate. Um, and you know, the, the Republican was trying to gather people from both the far right and kind of the middle left. And the same thing from the Democrat, trying to go far left and kind of middle right. Um, and they were kind of near the middle. As soon as you chopped off the left and right sides so that the Republicans only have to worry about the right, now all of a sudden that far right fringe candidate, um, people like Trump, <laughs> um, all of a sudden they don't have to compete against those middle leaning Democrats, the, the Democrats who might have voted for that middle candidate guy. Um, 
So, bam, now you can start getting in those heavily fringe candidates. Um, and that's how we end up with the, the divisive system we currently have. Not only are, is the makeup, Republicans and Democrats, being manipulated um, in Congress by gerrymandering, but that very same ger gerrymandering is making the Republicans and Democrats who are in Congress that much more polarized and that much more fringe and therefore that much less likely to fucking work together on moderate policies that might actually be useful. Um, so yeah, it, it's a, it, it's, it's a straight up horrible, horrible thing. Um, the, the only, I mean, there are a few things in favor of it. Um, technically the, uh, um, the, the, um, you know, you are, in like case, the case of president, you are ending up with the theoretical most popular guy, um, you know, so, so you're not, in, in other systems, you sometimes end up with, yeah, okay, that's my second choice, um, you're, you're compiling a bunch of people's second choices to be the guy elected, um, Although, to be fair, in our current system, that's still the case. Um, I mean, how many people, Clinton is their second or third choice, but hey, I'd rather not vote for Trump. Um, it's just way less obvious because they didn't write it on a ballot that it was their second or third choice. Um, yeah. A another big problem with the system is, um, or with, with another system is, once you start getting in five, six, seven different parties, right, um, like, let's go with um, our current congressional makeup. Let's say we add in a third party. Um, it becomes less of an issue if you got five, six, seven. But let's say well, we change our electoral system and we end up with a third party being able to get um, a, a pretty good foothold in Congress. Um, they've got, we'll go 20% um, of the vote, right? Mm -hmm. That leaves the Republicans. We'll, we'll go spl straight split Republicans, Democrats. Republicans have 40%. Democrats have 40%. Um, the small party has 20%. We'll, we'll just go the independent party has 20% of the vote. Um, but when I say independent party, I don't just mean people running as independents. I mean, I'm talking they're a cohesive party. In fact, I don't even like that name anymore. We're going to call them the um, middle of the road party. What the fuck? I, I'm not very creative today. Um, right? Right. Um, with another system that allows them to become more populous, you give them a disproportionate amount of power. Because if you need a majority to get anything done, you need... 50% of the vote plus one. Neither the Republicans nor the Democrat has that on their own. Meaning the Republicans and the Democrats are going to have to be trying to sway those middle-of-the-road party guys to their side. Which means the middle-of-the-road party can sit there and go, what are you going to give me so that I will vote for you and you can have what you want? Um... So it, it does give, especially in a polarized government like we currently have, it gives those middle-of-the-road guys um, way much, way, way more power, a disproportionate amount of power than the 20% of Congress they have would suggest. Because everybody has to make deals with them um, to get the votes necessary to pass anything. Um, yeah. So they are getting what they want a lot more often than anybody else. Um, not a big issue if they are the middle of the road party. You've got a polarized right, a polarized left, and um, someone in the middle. That just means everything is coming toward the middle. But let's say you have a super far left Democratic Party, a middle of the road Republican Party, and a 20% fringe group of the Republicans. Um, now, rather than being middle of the road to get their stuff done... Um, those middle-of-the-road Republicans keep having to lean further and further um, towards that fringe right to get anything done. Because the left is so far left, they also don't want to participate with the, the middle-of-the-road Republicans. And the Republicans are slightly more comfortable going further right than they are further left, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah, okay, that's that's a thing. Um but once again, when you get into, like, if there's five or six parties, um, everybody is going to have to work together to get anything done, which is going to start bringing everything more towards the middle of the road. Um, and in you know, most countries, that's actually the preferable way for things to go. Everybody would rather lean more towards the middle than either of the extremes or any of the extremes. Um, so, yeah. Um, 
alternate voting systems. Um, I'm going to see if you are aware of any of these. Um, are you aware of instant runoff voting, Wes? Uh, I'm not. Okay, instant runoff voting um, is a system where you don't write down um, who your choice is. You don't go into a ballot and go, I want Hillary. Um, you go in and you say, I want this guy first. This would be my second choice. This would be my third choice. This would be my fourth choice. This would be my fifth choice. You know, down to however many choices you make. Um, and what happens is, let's say your first choice is Bernie Sanders. They tally up everybody's first choice votes. And Bernie Sanders did not win. In fact, nobody had enough votes. Because usually you would shoot for a uh, majority in this point, at this point in time. Which is not necessary in the U.S. for... Um, winning a presidential election. You just have to have the most votes. You need a plurality. Um, so if, like, 40% of the people want a vote, or 40% of the people vote for Trump, Trump wins. If he, if, you know, Clinton only got 35% of the votes. Um, in this system, if nobody got 50%, um, nobody wins. So, then they take the bottom guy. Let's say, um, We'll only do the three candidates. We'll say three candidates were Trump, Clinton, and Sanders. Um, well, Sanders didn't win. He's the third place guy. They scratch him off the ballot, and everybody who voted for Sanders as number one, they moved to what their number two was. So if you voted for Clinton for number two, bam, you now get give a vote to Clinton. Um, if you mark down Trump is your number two because you were one of those um, and I don't know if you're aware of this but there are actual Bernie Sanders people who were hated Clinton so much they were actually talking about voting for Trump instead yeah and those guys um, those people anger me to no end um, but yeah w with this system those votes would then go to Trump um, obviously at that point in time somebody's going to have over half the vote because we're down to just the two candidates um but yeah, the, the same thing would be applied to like five candidates. You chop off the bottom one, redistribute that guy, whoever voted number one for the bottom guy, redistribute them. Still no first, um, first place guy, scratch off the next one, redistribute them. Still no guy after that, scratch off that guy until somebody has at least half the votes, a majority of the votes. Um, yeah, and, that's, and that sounds like a system um, I prefer over our current system. Right. Um, it does have issues. Like, obviously, that's going to be a lot harder to count. Um, <laughs> you know, but with modern computer systems, um, assuming somebody actually was willing to adopt a modern computer system for voting, which a lot of places aren't willing to do, a lot of votes are still hand counted. Um, which is odd because the early um, vote I sent in, because uh, I just went to the police station or uh, the, the town hall. Yeah. Where I live. and or I courthouse. Yeah, courthouse. And um, uh, I filled out the application. I submitted my ballot to a um, an actual computer. Yeah. Um, I mean, don't get me wrong. There are people moving up in into computer things. Um, and there have been mechanical methods of counting for a while. Um, the whole big thing back in the 2000 election was actually one of those mechanical systems down in uh, Florida. Mm-hmm. Um, where um, they had a, a thing where you punched out a little tab and the computer system would register the votes. Um, some of the, the things were not everybody had that tab completely punched out. So when it went through the computer system, the computer did not register as a vote because the computer saw it as you didn't vote at all because the little tab was still there. Um, yeah. Or, and it probably wasn't even a computer system. It was probably a mechanical counting system. Um, but anyway, yeah. So... Um, kind of like filling in bubbles on, on tests in, in school and stuff, right? Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, systems like that. Um, you know, they, they are things, but there are still a lot of places, um, especially more rural places, um, where, yeah, the votes are hand-counted. Um, because they don't have the money in their budget to set up a computer voting system. Um, and that's another fun thing about our election. The voting rules are vastly different, not only state to state, 
but also municipality to municipality. Um, so what I do to vote here in my small town is not necessarily the same thing that anybody else is doing, even in another small town in Minnesota. Um, wow. So, um, <clears throat> yeah, it's 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 a fun fun thing. I mean, there are some rules, and there have been reform things. Um, where where um, they they tried standardizing some things, especially after the the Gore Trump or not Gore Trump Gore Gore Bush fiasco, um, where if I remember right, the um, winning thing ended up being like five hundred some votes different. Yeah, that's what I'm hearing. Um, and and um, a lot of people blame Ralph Nader for the loss of um. Uh, for Gore, because most people who voted for Gore would have, if we'd done this instant runoff thing, their second choice would have been, or the people who voted for Nader, a lot of them, their second choice would have been Gore, not Bush. Yeah. Um, so their um, system would have then put um, Gore in the lead mm -hmm. if they had done in instant runoff. Um, because Nader received more than 500 votes in Florida. So, yeah. Um, yeah. Um, here's another election system for you. You ever heard of the approval voting? No, I have not. Approval voting is where you um, get your vote. But instead of just marking off the one candidate you like, you mark off all the candidates you would be okay with. So if you were okay with, um, you know, Hillary, you'd mark her. If you're also okay with the Libertarian guy, you'd mark him. If you're also okay with Sanders, you'd mark him. Um, you don't list them in a, in, in a, this is my number one choice, this is my number two choice. So you have to personally decide how far down that list are you going to go before you no longer would be okay with them being president. Um, but then you tally it all up. Um, so, yeah, um, that sounds... you may actually end up with more votes than people who voted. Well, actually, you will end up with more votes than people who voted. You know, um, Hillary might get, like, you know, 30 million votes. Bernie Sanders might have gotten, like, 25 million votes. And all 25 million people who voted for Sanders also marked Clinton down. Um, you know, so in my obviously not accurate situation I just laid out there, Clinton would have only had 5 million unique votes. Um, you know. That sounds like an awesome <laughs> voting system, and it angers me that no one has, in the United States has been like, yeah, we should change a bit, maybe. Um, well, the, the biggest one with that is, um, like I said, then everybody gets more than one vote. Um, what happens if I only approve of one candidate, and I only mark off my one candidate, but you approve of 15? Um, <laughs> True. You, know, you have now had 15 votes. I only got one. To be fair, that was a personal choice on my part. Um, but do you put an, impose a limit? You can only vote for five. Maybe you can only vote for two. Um, you know, so there's a lot of uh, questions involved in this. Um you also could end up with the um, um, the the issue of with multiple votes, um, you can end up with a lot closer elections. <laughs> um, True. You know, because um, yeah, if if everybody's voting two or three times, um, you know, Bernie Sanders may have ended up pretty close to Hillary Clinton. Um, at the end of end of the election, um, so does that? I'm going to bring up a a, a fun uh, phrase here that is occasionally thrown out. Does that give either leader a mandate from the people to rule when the vote was that close? I know you're wrong. We have the same problem in our current system as evidenced by literally 500 votes coming between uh, Gore and Bush. Um, <laughs> I'm not certain if either of those counted as a mandate. Um, yeah. But, 
you know, um, th these are all all questions you have to ask. Um, yeah, exactly. Hmm. Um, and then when you get into say Congress, um, there there is a method of I don't remember the name of this one. Um, uh, um, but there's a method of voting which involves um, ranking, just like the um, um, instant runoff voting did. But it's used, rather than voting for a single thing, uh, remember how we mentioned earlier that all of Minnesota's congressional seats are voted on by individual districts, right? Yeah. My district in Minnesota, um, I get one choice. Well, if we took all of those guys and... Um, let's say I have no idea how many congressmen Minnesota actually has. I'm going to claim they have five. Um, rather than splitting them up by districts, that I vote for one, and you know, you in a different district vote for another one, and somebody else in a third district votes for a third different guy, um, everybody in Minnesota votes for all five people. Um, there, there, there's a system set up where um, you, you do still rank people, kind of like the, the um, instant runoff, but you go down the list, and once a person has been has reached a certain number, like let's say um, candidate A gets some of the votes from um, everybody, right? Well, bam, he now um, gets one of those five seats. That leaves you four more seats to fill. Okay. Seventy-five percent of the people voted for candidate number one. Mm. You take that twenty-five percent that was over and above what he needed, and you transfer them to the next candidate that um, was second place. So, in, in the um, Bernie Sanders, Hillary Clinton situation, um, everything above fifty percent for Clinton would go to Bernie Sanders voters. Mm. Uh, a nice easy example here um and if that brings bernie sanders up to enough people or to enough votes bam he gets the second seat and then you you do the same thing and then when you run out of seats now you start doing the, the runoff election thing you eliminate the bottom guy you distribute out the votes um and what you're going to end up with is um a system that couldn't can't be gerrymandered, but is going to be a lot closer in representation to the actual um, split of, of people. So if you have, you know, four or five different parties, um, okay, if you've got five different parties and five seats on Congress, you're not going to get one from each party, because for starters, that's not the, the dis distribution. Like, let's say 50% um, were Republican and 25% were Democrat. And the remaining 30% were split up amongst the other three parties. Um, you'd have two, maybe three Republicans, one or two Democrats, and one whoever was most popular from the other three parties. Mm -hmm. um, it is, that's how you're going to end up with your, your thing split up. Instead of a gerrymandered system where all five seats might end up Republican, um, as we laid out earlier discussing gerrymandering. Mm hmm you know, there's all these different ways of doing it. And there's even more. I'm, I'm sure lots and lots of people have lots and lots of different ways of doing this. Um, as far as I'm concerned, all of these other methods um, are are at least worth looking at. Um, because right now, um, election turnout is terrible in the U.S. Oh, yeah. Because so many people don't feel their vote is worth it. Um, like you um, could have stayed home. You voted, well, technically you might, I mean, you kind of did. You didn't really have to wait in line or anything, because apparently Minnesota has an early voting process. Uh, it's something that has been adopted to the states over the past couple of years, actually. Yeah, um, no idea. I, like I said, I don't vote. I, I got turned off of voting right away when I was 18, and I've never bothered. Um, Do you know how tempted I was to be like, eh, I want to stay home? At, at least as far as your presidential vote was concerned, voting and staying home had the exact same effect on the election. Mm -hmm. um once again i do advocate everybody go vote for local elections um in that i am wrong because in local elections you usually don't have these issues i don't know about where in big cities new york 
um, Chicago, stuff like that. But at least in my small town, I don't think anybody even bothers to mention a party affiliation on their local election ballot. Um, there is no party affiliation. It is, and everybody is um, campaigning on um, their platform. Um, what, like, you aren't tearing everybody down. Like, uh, the last time we had a mayor mayoral election in town, um, the guy who had been mayor for like two decades, I think, um, was tired of running unopposed. He went to another businessman in town that he knew, and he said, hey, guy, I think you'd make a good mayor. You should run against me. <laughs> um, they ran a clean election. Both mayor candidates only talked about what they were going to do, how they were going to benefit the populace. And that guy um, who was brought into the election by the sitting mayor won. Um, because the population felt that he had the better platform. Because um, nobody was voting against the old mayor. Hell, they've been electing him for 20 years. Um, <laughs> you know, nobody hated the old mayor. They just liked the new mayor's take on things better. Um, so in local elections, you don't normally run into these issues. Um, once again, when you get into, like, big cities, Chicago, New York, L.A., I don't know, maybe it's a bigger problem there. Um, but at least in smaller towns, you don't have a lot of these issues. I recommend voting for your local elections. They're going to be way, way more um, uh, affecting on your life than the big national election. But yeah, Wesley, as far as national election is concerned, as far as the presidential election is concerned, um, voting for anybody but Hillary or Trump, you might as well stay at home. Um, you literally did nothing except for possibly, um, if you had to choose, if the only two names in the ballot were Trump or Clinton, um, who would you have picked? Oh, it's so hard. And and you were you were compulsory voting. Had to vote. Required of you. Um uh, couldn't stay home. Who would you have voted for? Oh. Is Seppuku an option? No, I told you you have two <laughs> options. <laughs> have to pick which one's it gonna be. Um oh god. Clinton. You would have voted for Clinton. Yes. Okay. Which means if Clinton loses this election, you're not voting for her is part of that problem. I see, um, I see. You put Trump into office by by not voting for Clinton. Um, um, I think and, our, our our friend Bill said it best. I'm voting third party, so I can bitch about the results either way. <laughs> well, see, no, that is, I, I hate people who say if you didn't vote, you don't get to complain. Because like I just pointed out, staying home had the exact same effect on the election as voting for somebody. Yeah. Um, recognizing this, knowing this, and choosing not to participate should not be punished. Mm -hmm. um, refusing to participate in a system as a statement of this system is broken should not be punished. And yes, you should still be able to point at the system and be like, see how this asshole is now president? It's because the system is fucking broken, and you should be able to say that regardless of the fact that you chose not to participate in the system and you chose to stay at home. Yeah, yeah, um, I, I do believe that too. I just um, was uh, making it. So... <laughs> So, so yeah. No, well, no, you, you were making a joke, but no, that is a legitimate belief that a lot of people have, is if you didn't vote, you don't get to complain. Um, and, let's face it, what they mean is not if you voted for a third-party candidate. They mean if you didn't go vote for either the Republican or the Democrat that you like, um, then you don't get to complain. Um, because if you don't like Trump, you should have fucking voted for Hillary. Once again, that's part of the problem. Everybody looking at the election as you have to vote against the guy. I don't have to vote against Trump to hate Trump and to not like his presidential policies. I don't have to vote against... And because there is no one to vote for, because our system is fucked up, um, once again, there's literally no difference between voting for a third-party candidate, throwing away your vote that way, or staying home. Um, so no, I, I do not ascribe to the, if you didn't vote, you don't get to complain. Um, you might be able to talk me into that in local elections, because once again, local elections don't have most of these problems, mostly because they're too small for them to be as effective on the local. I mean, how are you going to gerrymander, um, a, a town of 10,000 people effectively? Um, yeah. you know, especially when nobody's necessarily running 
for parties. I mean, we don't have Republicans and Democrats for city council. <laughs> in How are you going to gerrymander it to, I mean, you know, um, it, it's just not a thing that, that uh, is a problem at, at the local level. Um, but yeah, as far as I'm concerned, you can go ahead and blow off the federal elections and you still have a right to complain about it because the system's broken and you should not be forced to pick the candidate that or to, you should not be forced to vote against somebody. Um, it is going to ruin democracy. It is ruining democracy. Um, it's, it's bad for democracy. It's fucking democracy up. And I hate how many people um, trot out that if you didn't vote, then you don't get to complain bullshit um, as, as a defense of um, a system that is ruining democracy. Um, exactly. And, like, you know, that's why I will say this again and again. I hate the fact that this was my first election, <laughs> but I love it at the same time because it exposed me to how. I, I don't think it's going to get any better, man. I, I hate to tell you, but I don't think it's going to get any better. Um, that just hurts, man. That just hurts. Um, yeah, it's, 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 it's. And a lot of people um, will ask if these other systems work better if they're so much more representative of our views um and let's face it the worst thing most people say about these other systems is they force more compromise and let's face it that's a lot of what people are complaining about our government currently not doing um, exactly so that doesn't sound like a bad thing um the, the only reason it should sound like a bad thing that that these other systems are forcing more compromise and giving minority groups more power to force these compromises. Um, the, the only reason that should be bad is if you are one of those far right leaning guys who would love Clint or not Clinton, who who'd love Trump to barely eke out Clinton and then completely stick it to all those left wing Democrats who you know want to to um, turn the government into a big socialist utopia that'll crumble in five minutes and um, you know um, yeah. in, in which case you aren't. You, you don't want compromise because you want your side to crush the opposition and you want your side to rule unopposed. Um, you know, you, you don't want to look what's best for the majority of the people. You want to look what's best for you and screw everyone else. Um, yeah. Those are the only people who don't want to see the more diverse setups. Um, but the, the biggest problem for why you aren't ever going to get these systems in place is the current systems – have entire industries built around them. The politicians, the um, people doing the gerrymandering, the um, 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 people for big corporations that are, are uh, trying to get come or trying to get politicians to vote for them and represent the big corporations' um, interests in Congress and stuff. All of this stuff is set up on our current system, um, and the only way to change it is well. I suppose there are two ways. Um, there is the theoretical possibility that enough of the population wants a change and can force a constitutional amendment. But actually in the U.S., I don't even know if the populace has that as an option um, or whether or not Congress still has to pose it and then people could approve it as, a, as an amendment to the Constitution. I don't know. That'd be an interesting campaign to start. Um, actually, knowing what I do about the Founding Fathers, I am leaning more towards the population is unable to um, force a constitutional amendment. Um, yeah. Because the whole reason we have the Electoral College and the whole reason that you needed to own land and be a white guy, a white male, in the um, original system wasn't because um, the Founding Fathers were catering to racists or anything it's because they really thought that the only people and it may have been theoretically true at the time um but they actually thought at the time that unless you were smart enough to own land and have money you weren't smart enough to make a decision regarding the direction of the country um you were simply too stupid and you being involved in the process would muck it up um yeah that, that was the actual view of the Founding Fathers, was the general people were too fucking stupid and would ruin things. They needed the social elite who were smart enough, and of course whom these people were part of, um, to, you know, 
to to participate in. Um, so you, they needed to be leading the stupid people along and doing what's best for everyone, including the stupid people. Um, but we can't have the stupid people mucking it up. So yeah, I'm guessing people who looked at the country like that would not have turned around and said, well, I guess if enough stupid people get together, they can make sweeping changes to the Constitution. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, realistically, it sounds like the only way that you are ever going to get um, these changes pushed through is you need the people who have jobs in the system because of the system. You need to get them to change the system. Um, even though you're changing it to a system where they are far less likely to have a job after the system's been changed. Um, yeah. You know, and yeah, good luck convincing anybody of that. <laughs> um, hey, would you like to change the system to benefit Put others? yourself out of a job. Yeah. Yeah, um, basically the only way that's going to happen is if there's a big push and there are actual candidates campaigning on that being the thing they're going to do. I have never been a politician before. I want you to make me a politician so we can make these changes, and yeah, I will probably be out of a job after that. But guess what? I don't really want this job. I only want it long enough to make the changes. Um, it is possible we might get enough candidates like that somewhere down the line. Um, awesome. A big problem is going to be how many different voting systems did I already lay out for you? Um, oh, like yeah, we need some enough people who all want the same voting system. Yeah, to all run on that platform of put us in for one term, we'll change everything up, and then we won't have a job because you won't want us anymore. But hey, we're okay with that. Um, mm. Yeah, you need enough people who all want the same system, and the ones I've laid out are far from the only ones. There are a lot of other systems out there with that I'm less familiar with, um, with varying degrees of, of popularity and um, So yeah, Travis, no. we need to get you into politics, right? <laughs> um, yeah, I suppose I could start running for some local elections and by the time I'm old enough I could be president. Um, um, my, my, my first um, first thing right now, um, when I become president, I will do one of two things and I will flip a coin to see which one I do. Thing number one, I will completely change the entire electoral system. Um, upend the entire system in, in some fashion I haven't decided yet. Vote two, I'm going to push the big red button in the nuclear football and I will launch missiles at a country randomly determined by a roll of the dice. Um, <laughs> with North Korea being the um, highly um, weighted end of the spectrum. Um <laughs> There, that 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 should get me as as president, right? That's so, that's so, all I need. Well, let's see, um, let's see, let's see. It'll be a thousand sided dice, and um, numbers. Uh, let's go five hundred to one thousand are Korea. <laughs> no, that's not a large enough portion. Um, <laughs> we're gonna need a ten thousand sided dice. Everything that isn't North Korea gets one number. North Korea gets the remaining numbers. <laughs> <laughs> oh. at that point you might as well say hey i'm changing our electoral system and i'm nuking korea <laughs> no because i have to flip a coin to decide which one of those two things i'm doing um <laughs> you see everyone in you see half the crowd hoping for korea the other half hoping for the electoral system <laughs> yes that would be epic so yeah um no i i loathe our current system the reason we only have two parties is, let's face it, if you have to vote against somebody, you need to come together into a single opposing party to have any hope of beating that person. Yeah. So you're going to end up with two parties. Um, because you need, the party you pick is not the party you agree with, it's the party that's against the guy you don't like. And you can only have two in that system. Um, so if you don't like the fact that we've only got two parties, if you don't like the fact that you have to vote against somebody and not for somebody. Um, our system sucks, and I don't like it, and I want it to go away, and I, I literally have no idea how to how to make that happen. I, I am not in a current position to do that. Um, yeah. in, in my life, I frequently bounce from one job to the next every couple of years, so I've never made enough uh, contacts in the local area. Um, you know, I'm not some big 
businessman in town who's a, a cultural touchstone in town that everybody knows and everybody trusts. You know, if, if I ran for office, um, I would have to hire one hell of a, a political uh, support team to go through and, and put the system together to get people to recognize me and vote for me um in addition to the fact that i had to put one hell of a political system together to aid me once i'm elected because once again it is ridiculous to think that either of the two leading candidates trump or clinton can make all of the decisions that um are currently being put in front of the president on their own um I mean, you have to be a foreign policy guy. You have to be a domestic policy guy. You have to be dealing with businesses and, and people and environmental concerns. And you somehow are expected to know all of this? No, you, you have to pick people who know what the fuck they're doing, that you can trust, that are going to see things from a view, at least on that topic, the same way you view that topic. And you need to put them in place so that they look at it and they basically come back with a recommendation and you have to be able to trust that it's the right one and that's the one you go with. Um, there is almost no other way to be a president um, in any country. Um, yeah. And I'm doubting it's a whole lot easier as mayor. I mean, you want a mayor to both know about um, whether or not there's money in the budget for parks and rec and street repairs and schools and, you know, um, actually, no, most mayors don't have to worry about schools. Most school districts are independently operated, so I guess that's a thing. Um, so there's another thing. Um, uh, vote for your school board. If, so that's going to have whether or not your kids are any – whether or not the school your kids go to sucks, um, vote for your school board in local elections. Um, I don't know if I've stressed enough in this, so I'm going to do it again. Um, local elections, boss. Um, <laughs> vote local. Um, those happen every two years, at least. Um, some some localities, maybe more often, um, depending upon the rules for special elections and when people step down and, and, and stuff like that. But at least every two years, there's a local fucking election. Um, vote for it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's... Also, yeah. the thing I'm taking away from this, vote locally, and then... Yes. Um, if you blow off the presidential election, probably isn't going to bother anybody. Um, you blow off the local election, it's probably going to screw you in the ass. Um, unless you are very confident that the guy you agree with is going to win. Um. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Um, that's that's politics for me. Um do uh, you have any questions, Wesley? Anything you, you want explained better? Any? Nah, you, you explained it pretty well. Okay. Um, um, yeah. Just... So, so after hearing all of this, um, at least from my, my general thing, I don't recommend you make any decisions based upon what I just said. Um, if, if you were being put in a place to make a decision, um, I would hope you would go do some more research on these various voting systems. But... Um, in a hypothetical situation where um, what I have given you is all of the information you have on local election or on um, elections, um, what do you see as as your system of choice? Um, uh, shoot. Like, which uh, election process would I go for? Yeah. Yeah. How would you change our electoral process? Um. um Oh, shoot, I forget what you called it, but it was the one where you rank who you want. The instant runoff, okay. Yeah. And um, I'd probably have it be popular vote over the Electoral College. Yeah, um, at this point in time, I see no reason for an Electoral College. Um, I didn't even really touch on that all that much. Um, but yeah, the Electoral College is put in place. Um, did you know those guys used to be able to vote for whoever they wanted? Um, yeah. They, they could straight up look at the popular vote and be like, ha! These schmucks all pick Clinton. Fuck that. I'm voting Trump. Um, you know, 99% of Minnesota at that point in time could have voted for Clinton. And the entire Electoral College could decide to vote for Trump. Because fuck it. Trump gave them a million dollars each. Um, <laughs> that These are actual things that could have theoretically happened. I'm not sure about, certainly about the bribery one. That was probably always illegal. Um, but at least is the, the, the not having to vote for them... Um, I believe, and it may have changed, I haven't heard a statistic in a couple of years, but I believe it was only slightly more than half, maybe two-thirds of states actually have a law on the books that require the Electoral College to vote for the um, um, 
the the person that the state voted for. Um, some of them go an all in, where if Clinton gets like forty five percent of the popular vote and Trump got forty four percent of the popular vote, every one of your electoral votes would go towards the candidate. Um, I do believe there's a couple out there that have it where the votes actually get split. Not, if any, like maybe three. Um, where if, if 45% voted um, Clinton and 44% voted Trump, they would give um, Clinton one more electoral vote than Trump and they'd split their votes up. Um, yeah. I don't actually know if anybody still does that. Um, but yeah, the, the, the electoral college... I don't actually agree with any of the the reasons for it originally existing. Um, it, it was kind of created as a stopgap. Um, once again, um, nobody believed that the population could be trusted with this decision. They were all too stupid, but enough of them were clamoring that they wanted to be able to vote, that they said, okay, fine, you can vote, but we're going to establish this um, group of people called the Electoral College, and you're actually just telling them your point of view and they still do the voting, therefore still making sure the smart people get to do the voting and the stupid people get left out of the system. Um, I don't really agree with that ever. <laughs> um, I don't think it was true at the time. I mean, it might have been. I mean, the education system, people complain about the education system in the U.S. currently, but the education system, you know, um, back then was definitely not even as good as it is today. Um, but then again, I don't know if, you know, not knowing Shakespeare or, you know, even maybe not knowing math um, beyond simple addition, subtraction, you know, because you were a farmer. Um, does that really mean you couldn't figure out whether or not the guy voting pro or against slavery is um, a, the guy you want in office? I mean, I... I'd have to get into it deeper with somebody who is for the Electoral College to hear their views on on why these people could not be trusted. Um, what made them so incredibly stupid that they could not be trusted to, to actually elect a leader? Um, I just – right now I find it hard to believe that anybody could be that stupid um, and still be able to vote. Um, you know, anybody smart enough to get to the poll and – fill out a ballot i i think that is probably i mean you know we can trust that they're smart enough to freaking uh um you know do the election um what i love especially is that they made the electoral college because they decided people were too stupid to vote and then um a lot of places um instituted tests you had to pass before you were allowed to vote um these were introduced shortly after uh, slavery was abolished, um, largely yeah. in the South, and because black people didn't have the education to be able to pass those tests. Mm -hmm. um, so even though none of these people were considered smart enough for their opinion to matter, black people weren't considered smart enough to voice their opinion, <laughs> even that, even though their opinion didn't matter. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, I... I the electoral college should go away. I agree with that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's. So, um, with regards to things like um, Congress and the Senate and what have you, um, do you agree with just applying the um, instant runoff voting and keeping each seat as an individual seat, or would you prefer to see them set up in that other one? I can't remember the name of. Um, where, like, Minnesota would, all their congressmen would be voted. And it wouldn't have to be all of Minnesota. I mean, you could split it up so that, let's say, Minnesota has um, nine congressmen. Once again, I don't actually have any idea. Um, I should know, but I don't care enough. Um, but, yeah, let's say um, Minnesota has nine congressmen. Um, either Minnesota could, all nine of them are voted on the same ballot, or you could split Minnesota up into three parts. Um, and each section gets three candidates. Um, obviously split up along population lines, so that way, um, you know, the, uh, you don't have, um, misrepresented, you know, votes and what have you when you're splitting things up. Um, you know, these hundred million people get three candidates and those ten people get three candidates. Um, <laughs> you know. Yeah. Um, I, I'd, I'd like to see it done the second way. 
because that seems like a more I wouldn't say balanced system, but um Well, it actually is a more balanced system. Yeah. I was trying to find a better word for it. <laughs> because um the, the difference is the way we currently do it, um each election, because each seat on Congress is one group of people, right? Yeah. Um so each election is let's say um Republicans are um Fifty-one percent of Minnesota and Democrats are forty-nine percent of Minnesota. Um, we're just going to pretend third parties don't exist for this little thing, right? Mm. Um, and there are ten candidates. You'd expect either fifty-fifty, five for each party, or maybe six for the Republican Party and four for the Democratic Party, right? Mm. But by having it set up so that each position only gets the one vote or only gets the the one thing. Um, even using the instant runoff method, you're far more likely to end up with those 51% of Republicans winning every single seat. Mm. Um, which means you're going to end up with 10 Republican candidates for a state that is 51% and 49%. Um, by doing it the other way, you're far more likely to end up with a Democratic candidate making his way up in the system and getting closer to half the seats that the democrats should have to be representative of the populace um yeah so mm -hmm. all right um so that is the elections and that is voting and my opinions of it here in the states um and wesley's opinions having been informed by my opinions because yeah wesley's 19 he's new to this voting thing um well I'm, I'm, new, I'm new to the whole adult thing i mean yes um it's scary i'm i'm older i've been doing this for a while um like i said this is my uh fifth national election um obviously there's been off years smaller elections every year since um yeah and and i've hated politics since i was that first election so i've had a long time to think about this and, and hate it all um yeah but yeah so um yeah that is the esoteric podcast that is um not necessarily the opinion of everybody on the esoteric podcast um but that is the opinion of both myself and wesley um so yeah, um, I am Travis, TJ Bunker. Um, this is Wesley. You can check out Wesley over on his channel. He does fun things here on YouTube under Demosci, D-E-M-O-S space I. Um, hmm. He does super cool things. Um, check the Esoteric Podcast out here on YouTube. We're the Esoteric Podcast on YouTube. Over on Twitch, we are the Esoteric Podcast over on Twitch. Check us out on Twitter. We are at the Esoteric Pod on Twitter. And um, if you really like what you do, you want more from us, give us some money um, over on Patreon. Um, we're, we'll get some cameras. We'll get some video footage. Um, we are looking to put together some, some video skits and some other shows and more opinion pieces and, and more reviews and more just more content for everybody who likes this. If you want to support that, you want to help us get the equipment to do that, um, support us over on Patreon. We're the Esoteric Podcast over on Patreon. And uh, thank you for uh, listening. Thank you for watching. I mean, we got like a logo background here. So thanks for staring at that for however long we've been talking about the election here. Or, or just um, uh, putting uh, you know, your phone or mobile device in your pocket and making sure, yeah. you know, yeah. Yeah, plug in some headphones. You can just listen to us. Confident in the fact that this had no video to, uh, and most of our stuff currently has no video to worry about missing. So, um, yeah. Yeah, thank you for listening. Um, uh, goodbye for me. I don't know if you got anything else to say, Wesley. Um, you know, everything Travis has said, uh, thank you for watching. Uh, we will see you next time. Um, that's it, actually. Uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Bye. <laughs>